<laughs> cool. Got it. Um, yeah, we were going to, I mean, we have quorum. I don't, I get, I assume we were, we're expecting Tim. We're not sure where Tim's at, but we know Michael's going to be a little late, so that's fine. And everybody else is accounted for. So I think we could probably get started. Uh, let's see here. Um, listen, we, it's 606. We did a relationship check-in and it was just all about fantasy television. That was our whole thing. <laughs> Does someone want to call the meeting to order. Call the meeting to order. Okay. Well, Jeremy's a little garbled, but I think that's what he just did. So can <laughs> yeah, I, that's what I did. Can I get uh, a second? I second. Cool. All those in favor of bringing the October Northampton Open Media Board of Directors meeting to order, say aye or raise your hand. Cool uh let's see here we've got minutes are in chat from september very good okay uh we will get to those in a second so let's talk about the next meeting if we are continuing with the second tuesday of every month at 6 p.m that would make our next meeting November 8th. How does November 8th look to people? That's good. Okay, we're getting some thumbs up. People are happy with it. Good. Awesome. All right. So we're going to say November 8th, 6 p.m., tentative for the next meeting, unless you hear otherwise. All right. That's out of the way. Next agenda item is the September Minutes. Who would like to recap the September Minutes? I will. Thank you. Uh, okay, they're the second ones I linked, I believe. Um, so last meeting, we set the date for this meeting. We uh, heard from Al on the director's report where there was lots um, happening. Um, uh, oops, I'm in the, um, and, uh, okay. Uh, there's lots of hap stuff happening, which you can read about on your own. Uh, they had, you know, the last crowdsource, or uh, the last uh, Cinema Northampton screening um and such okay and <laughs> and then we went through um the quarter one and quarter two financial spreadsheet and saw that it was balanced and asked questions about that um then we went through some smaller ticket items such as finding the arts trust um board member and um, talking about the nondescript uh, fund parade uh, and then um, talking about our strategy workshop. And uh, we decided to uh, work more on the board policy document next uh, next month and then we adjourned. All right. Uh, let's see here. Did everybody pass it? Uh, does it look good? Yeah. Let's. Does someone? Can we get a movement to approve the meetings from September? I move to approve the um, meeting, the minutes from September. Cool. Second. We got a second. All right. All those in favor, please say aye or raise your hands. All right. Yeah, good thinking, Jeremy. <laughs> um, all right. Meetings approved. Uh, wow, we're cooking. Let's move on to the next, always the, the best part of every meeting, Al's director report. 
Okay, um, so in the last month, uh, I posted a link of this in the chat of the Zoom meeting. Um, here's highlights from the last month. Um, Paul Kinsman, I'm sorry, is, is it Kinsman? Why am I thinking this is the wrong name now? It is Paul Stallman, I believe. I don't know, it's Paul Kinsman. Um, Paul Kinsman, my Paul is mixed up. The music director at the high school has requested regular access to our space in at 380 Elm Street. Um, he's doing a PhD thesis in acoustical measurements, and um, he would like to focus on our space as part of his analysis of space of spaces acoustically. Um, he's he's working with a very well renowned um, acoustic expert, and he would need access to the space. Um, roughly once a week uh, for a number of weeks. Uh, and in, in return, we would receive a very detailed analysis of the space and suggestions on what we could do to improve it. So it seems like a really kind of a no brainer situation to me. Um, I'd like to give Paul access to the space to do that. Uh, the easiest way to do that is gonna be to provide him with a code and a key. He's not a staff member. Um, he does work in the school. Um, and unless there's any objection from the board, I'd like to uh, move forward and give Paul that access. Um, it is possible that we could try to arrange for an evening a week in order to let Paul in, but he's looking to get into the space fairly late at night. And, um, and it may be difficult to schedule staff to do that. We do have security cameras in the space and Paul is a trusted uh, person that we work with. And so as long as there's no objection, I'd like to do that. Um, Liz Walber, uh, as the board knows by now, Liz Walber has tendered her resignation for Northampton Open Media. Um, she also had a potential COVID scare this month. She was gone for a bit of this last month. Uh, she gave her notice and her last day is actually this Friday, October 14th. So she's finishing up crowdsourced cinema. In fact, her last scene on air is her crashing an X-Wing into the ground and then and she will leave the employment of Nam. Um, and we're, we'll be really sad to see Liz go. Um, she's been a great employee. She leaves on really good terms. Um, she has some personal life things she needs to attend to. And so she needs to leave it for this period of time. Um, she's also indicated a willingness to help us train our new hire when we have that new hire on board. I've sent job announcements out and we also have leads on some temporary workers, some people who've offered their availability to help out during the transition. So if Dave and I need some support and need to bring on someone and um, hire them for a couple of hours here and there, I think there's a possibility of doing that. How, how challenging do you, do you think it will be to find someone? I mean, it's hard to say. In the past, we've had a tremendous number of applicants whenever we've reached out. But this is a very, very different job market than we've ever hired in. And so like, you know, um, we posted the job. Liz has worked here for about three years. The job, this, the salary I posted is, is above what she was hired, but a little below what she had been raised to at this point. But I don't know how that's going to reflect in the market in terms of, in terms of that. Um, so it's kind of an unknown. Um, but I will say... Historically, we have lots and lots of applicants to the position. There's people inside of our sort of circle that I think we have in mind as potential candidates who might be interested. Um, and we've mostly gotten a couple of LinkedIn resumes so far, but it's only been a weekend. Okay. Um, so that's where we are. The, I put the, the deadline for, for applications, at least the initial deadline is gonna be November 1st. And I'm gonna try to hire as speedily as possible. Um, you know, my intuition says we probably will get someone in by the first of the year. Um, Dave and I have already been talking about strategy um, for for a while. We're shorthanded um, and we think things are possible. We'll probably end up, you know, saying no to some things that we might have said yes to previously. But of course, nothing that's um, nothing that's a priority for us. Um, we should be OK. Is there anything the board can do to help you? Do you need, I don't know, in the hiring process, does this make sense that, like, out of board perspective, obviously it's your decision, I would say, but is there anything? Nothing that comes to mind, but I really, I appreciate the question, and I may have things that I reach out to people for. Okay. Um, and uh, talking about yeah. this. Is there like I, I you are going to do the farewell tomorrow? I understand. 
Yeah, uh, we're gonna have a we'll have a farewell meal as staff tomorrow for Liz. Okay. Is there yeah. she, she will get a special applause at the Crowdsource Cinema? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think uh we we I've been thinking about doing something there for her as well, for sure. Oh. That would be nice. Um that's a great segue into the fact that the premiere of Crowdsource Cinema is this Friday. October 14th, 7 o'clock at the Academy of Music. So please come and check it out. Um, it should be exciting. If you've ever seen Star Wars, you'll be able to hopefully follow the film. Um, it'll be a lot of fun. Um, we have spent a number of days this last month finishing up some some uh, shooting of scenes. Um, it's kind of always this way at the very end. Um, there's there's a lot of mm -hmm. like loose ends to tie up and some you know pieces to pick up. And so there's, we're finishing up the edit this week. Um, we feel like we're in a good place with it, um, but there's still a couple of things we need to drop in, and and um, and we were finishing one of our own scenes up today. So um, so that's been happening. Um, just an update on on the building, and that is that it looks like we'll be closing the doors to Nam at 33 Holly temporarily, starting on March 1st. Um, that's going to last somewhere between three and nine months, and I realize that's a really broad range of of, of days. Um, we'll know more about that as we get closer to that. Essentially, what we are in is a, is figuring out how the staging of the various uh, phases of the project is going to work. Um, so, depending upon how that 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 phasing occurs, will determine uh, how much we can be in there. Also, um, you know, it's possible the building will be available to us in the middle of that period of time, but I'm not sure if it really makes sense for us to move out of the building temporarily, move back into it temporarily, and then move back out of it temporarily. Um, so we may, that's the scenario in which we may stay out in the middle um, as well. So we'll know more as we go forward, but that's that's sort of where we are. Uh, we have another meeting with the site committee and the architects tomorrow. And so we'll have even more of an update then. What, what's the estimated effort in, in terms of moving? like? You have to move yeah. all the gear in and out. We have to move all of the equipment room. That'll all have to go over there to that space. As far as computers um, for editing, um, I know that um, Jeremy and I have been talking a little bit about some potential computers uh, that could end up as edit suites over there. But if not, we would take a couple of our desktops over. I think probably we would perhaps not use network storage because it might be a bit to pick up the entire network and and bring it over to the new space for for that period of time. Um, so I think we could do it with just a couple of a couple of desktops, moving the entire equipment room. Um, most of the furniture will just stay as it is in Holly. We don't have to clear the space out. Um, and um, and that should take. We're budgeting something like a week for that to move everything over and get it set up and be ready over there. We're going to start well before March, just getting that space um, kind of cleaned up a bit and, and prepared a little. It's in, it's not in disarray, but it's not organized in the, in the ideal functioning way that we, that we want right now. Mm -hmm. And also that it's like, if, if there's work done within the norm space now, like with the additional space and so on. Yeah, I mean, nothing is gonna, you know, you won't see things like, like walls being knocked down inside of our space. So we shouldn't have any, like we shouldn't, I don't know if we'll even have to put plastic over anything. Probably not. Um, that'll probably be separated from us. Um, and the timing of it is actually good. Um, it gives us time to sort of to build out the school program a bit. Um, we're going to get a bunch of new gear inside of there. And um, I think it'll be nice to be in that space and, and really um, deepen that relationship um, over that period of time. Is there anything like you were saying like uh, you moved before COVID into the new space. Yeah. Uh, it's not yet as busy as the old space, if I re remember. It's yeah, the back that's... and forth. Like yeah. may maybe that's something we can do that it's, I don't know, advertising in a way, an event when it's opening up again to push that people come there, that it's like the activation of the space. It should be the final move, hopefully. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, you know, and it's hard to know whether that what what workers are contributing to that as well, whether it's related to the new space or whether it's related to the pandemic has certainly affected um, our numbers. And, and I would say um, at a later point in the report, I mentioned um, the uh, 
you know, community media centers and speaking to community media centers across the country that their numbers are, are well down um, pretty universally. The mm -hmm. same is true um, to an extent of, of performance venues. You know, people are not seeing attendance. Attendance numbers are down across the board in arts and performance venues. Um, and certainly community media centers, um, they're seeing people are slow to come back. So there may be something about emerging from the pandemic, I think, is at work here as well. Um, the good news is that we have been, um, we've been really filling classes lately. Um, so we're seeing, I know we have, there's a lighting class next week. There's a light, there's a class going on tonight, but there's a lighting class next week that has eight people signed up for it. That's a pretty large lighting class for us. And these are all new people. We're seeing a lot of people who are coming back for these classes. Um, that we've been having in the fall. So maybe it's starting up and people are are coming out um, now, but um, but we'll see. Uh, Melissa, do you have a question? Yeah, I have a question. Um, can you just very briefly, yeah. I know that the, the Holly space got the $2 million, which is awesome. So what exactly is going on for the renovation? So the renovation, um, a number of things will happen. Um, you're, you've been in the building a number of times, right? So, so the flex space on either side of the flex space, which is, you know, you walk into the building and there's a large room on the right. That's the flex space on either side. Of, on one side of the flex space, there will be a ticket booth that will be built out. On the other side will be a concession stand that gets built out. Um, to the left out of that front door, which is currently the office space for the Northampton Center for the Arts, that's going to be renovated into a gallery space. Um, and the Center for the Arts will also have an office space that's part of a loft above that gallery. Cool. Um, this is so awesome. Yay. Will and um, improve our space? So we will get uh, in a, a big chunk of increased storage space behind our facility, um, sort of um, back where the fuse boxes are behind our space, and then under the stairs going up. It's hard to describe, but I could, if you ever wanted to come by and, and take a look, I could show you what it meant. But it will be an increase in storage space for us. The entire workroom is going to be renovated, um, there's going to be a catwalk put in um, an extensive lighting grid. There'll be a mezzanine inside of there. So there'll be a ton of, there'll be extensive renovation in the bottom floor and in the workroom um, behind us. Um, there'll be a green room put in. Um, there's gonna be um, showers in the green room. Um, it's not so applicable to us, but, but there'll be an awful lot added. We're also looking at um, that back parking lot, the lower part of the parking lot will be redone as part of this process as well. Um, so wow. it's a pretty, it's a pretty, it's a pretty large scale completion of the project. Does this trigger any investments on our end? Like if you uh, the first thing which comes to mind, obviously if there's more storage, you need more storage shelves, some stuff like that, but yeah, is there anything else which. No, and, and we actually may there inside of the budget. Currently there are some cameras for one of the spaces that would be cameras that we would be using and so we may gain that out of the budget there's th there's there's different levels of the budget as you can imagine so so there's, there's actually more than one set of cameras but they're at two different budget levels meaning if we can afford to do this you know this one budget level we will but it's it's first on the on the sort of cutting block um depending upon how things happen okay. um and it's very likely that want that that you know i imagine those things on the that are first on the cutting block they usually get cut typically um i'm not suggesting that they will but but it, i wouldn't be surprised if they do so one of the sets of cameras is in that bucket and there's another set of cameras in the main bucket of the building so so it's likely we'll get um some cameras out of the construction as well as some storage space um but i don't i don't anticipate a lot of any any drastic costs for us related to it out of our pocket Um, we're moving forward on, on, on the installation of the system inside of the JFK community room where the school committee meets, um, that quote is finished. There was some, you know, bureaucratic hurdles to figuring out how it was going to get paid for because we're doing this in, in, um, conjunction with the city. Um, but those are all ironed out. Um, essentially the city is going to pay for the gear and we're going to donate half of the cost of the gear to the city. 
Uh, it just makes the books work a little bit more easily and things like warranties um, that the city can hold inside of their pocket um, more clear. Um, I mentioned that we had a lot of uh, new attendance at meetings. Um, we talked about that already. Um, we're gonna be launching our production grants program. Um, we're doing that late this year, but it's gonna be launched. I'm gonna announce it at CrowdStar Cinema at that screening. Um, so there'll be a lot of people in the room to hear that. And we'll encourage people to, to sign up and to apply for grants to do their own original work. Hopefully they're inspired from finishing their crowdsource scenes and seeing them on the big screen. And some people will come and, and, and apply for those grants. Um, one note is I need a link of the, of the recording of the last board meeting. I have one from two board meetings ago, but I wasn't shared on the one from the previous one from our last meeting. So I'd like to get those online. Did I record that or did Melissa record that? I believe we, I, I didn't, but Al, it's in the board. Yeah. Uh, here, I can link it for you, but also it's in a folder in the board uh, folder is a meeting, board meeting recordings, but I can also link it for you. Yeah, I was going to say, I definitely know the folder for it. Yeah, I see it in the folder here. I, oh, yeah, I put it in there. Oh, it is? Okay. Yeah. I think last time I got a notification around it, maybe this time I didn't. Okay. Maybe it was because it was the first time something was dropped in there. Okay. Um, and then lastly, um, if the board feels comfortable with it, I'd like to ask for an approval of a $3,000 capital expenditure to get Dave a new laptop. Um, his laptop really needs upgrading. Uh, it's key to his work. Um, it's the item that I was uh, hoping to send out to you in the last month. Um, we have about $500,000 in reserves currently, and about 50,000 of that has been already approved for expenditure upon capital use. Um, I think that's a pretty good buffer, and um, it's certainly an essential item that we need to have Dave function. And that's my report. You forgot item five, the most oh. important item. Oh my gosh, we marched and streamed in the first ever Doozy Doe Parade. That was really fun, right? So that happened in downtown Northampton. That was really just great energy. Um, everyone seemed to really just be having a good time, getting a little weird and and just just feeling really free. I don't know. It had a nice, it had a nice vibe to it. We we streamed it live. The, the organizers were really happy with the stream. Um, a lot of them watched it or watched it afterwards. And um and we're gonna do another cut for them uh, so they can do some marketing next year. And um, so that was a lot of fun. It was also the perfect weather day. So yeah. it, was, it was fun. It was really yeah. fun. Yeah, that was a good time. Good. Uh, you would like to have a vote on number nine? Just to... if, yeah, should definitely do yeah. that. Okay. Um... Yeah, let's. Does, does someone want to uh, move to put uh, a three thousand um, dollar allocation of capital funds to upgrade Dave Newland? That's his last name, right? Dave Newland's work laptop. Who would like to put that up for a vote? Michael puts it up for a vote. He raises his hand. <laughs> I yeah, I'd like to, yeah, I'd make a motion that we approve $3,000 from the reserves to get Dave um, Newland, if I have the name correct, um, a, a new work laptop. Cool. All right. Any yeah, second? I'd second? There we go. Okay. One we got second. Second. <laughs> Who seconded? Who? I did. Oh, Jeremy. Yeah, Jeremy. Yep. Uh, okay. All those in favor? I uh, cool. Yeah, no, I think that's a no brainer, right? Like that amount of money, perfectly reasonable for the kind of machine that he's going to need to do his work. And uh, I don't think anyone can dispute that someone who's doing all the tech work that Dave is doing could really use a laptop that's up to date. So um, anyway, that easily passes. Uh, uh, cool. just, just a side note from my side. I like, uh, thank you for putting it a little bit into context. I think we that's that's on the wish list on the finance side that we find a better process of of looking at those kind of investments and have a better idea 
obviously against the 500,000 of reserve, it's no problem, but that we get a little bit of a better idea of what's, what's going into the pipeline. And hey, that's a remark to Elle and I, <laughs> because we're trying to figure those things out at the moment. And it uh, will for sure come out in the edit, uh, audit as well, that we don't have a process around those things really. Yeah. Okay, Nola's gonna head out. Nola, thanks for being here. We'll see you next month. Yeah, or we'll see you before that, actually, you but that. you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I should know this. Wait, did, we, oh. did we pick a date for um, the workshop? I was going to go over it oh. later, but oh, we can mention okay. it now. It'll probably be the 29th. Yeah. 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 All right. Cool. Bye. Bye. I, um, can I ask something that I guess I should know, but I don't, is um, regarding... Um, Nola leaving early. Do I note that in the minutes? Um, sure. Okay. And then and Michael coming in. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I don't I don't know if those things are like mandatory, but I think it's probably worth putting in. Okay, great. I think uh, it can have an impact on the quorum, so it should be noted. Oh, for sure. Yeah. That in the end we have a quorum again. Mm. Um but I'm sorry, Florian, I was, I kind of cut into you with that. What were you, what were you saying? Uh, no, I don't, I don't think you were. I, I, okay. Yeah, it's just, yeah. Uh, okay, so up next, we were gonna talk about uh, finance updates. Good. Al, you are muted if you were trying to talk. Thank you. <laughs> um, so you have uh, linked again in the chat the financials, which are um, quarters one through three of our FY 2022 budget. Just a reminder, we're on a calendar budget year. So it runs from January to December. So we just finished the third quarter of that year, one quarter left. Um, and so uh, you'll see in the board summary tab, um, the summarized um, numbers from those Q1, two and three. You can also see them all if you wish um, in the next tab over in detail, um, if you so wish to do that. Um, so these are the, the major buckets in which we have um, income and expenditures for Northampton Open Media. Um, um, you may have questions or I can go through these items. Um, and I know there's some, some questions that Florian anticipated you would have and they make a lot of sense. One of them was, I mean, if you look at our Q3, um, we have a, 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 a very large number inside of our Q3 from our Comcast fee. The reason for this is this is this actually represents two checks that were cut to us. One of those checks is from is actually from last fiscal year. Um, the deposit of it didn't go through um, and it was reissued to us and it took some time to get reissued to us. And so you'll see, you know, when we, when we account, we, when we do accrual accounting for this, that should, that should sort of take that out of this fiscal year, right, is my understanding. Um, but the reason, you, th that's the reason you're seeing that, that deposit inside of there. But was it booked in last year? It was booked in last year. Okay, so it was already, okay. It's already, yeah, exactly. Um, um, so, so really, really what you're seeing, seeing that 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 number as it, as it applies to this fiscal year is around one hundred and ten thousand dollars. Okay, instead of two hundred and seventeen thousand dollars. So keep that in mind when you're looking at this. Um, other than that, our, our numbers are fairly in line as they've been budgeted. Um, rent the rent number is a little bit higher than it should be by a touch, and that's accounted for by the fact that we have um, our CAM fees, which is common area maintenance. Um, those, those fees we pay, um, as an estimated amount, and then they're recalculated halfway through the year based on actuals. Um, so in other words, um, we're paying a number that we guess are going to be the cost of things like snow plowing, um, any, anything like elevator fees, um for you know we have to pay for a phone line inside of the elevator that's required by law all of those fees are split inside of the building by the three lessees depending upon the square footage that they um, take part in the building the square footage that they manage inside of the building and pay rent for inside of the building 
Um, so those cam fees, um, we, you know, we started paying more towards those cam fees in the middle of the year because costs went up uh, and costs are going to go up again this winter. You know, we've just found out that snow plowing is going to be uh, more than we expected. And so um, that's why that rent looks a little bit high, higher than it was budgeted. Um, similarly, we have a little bit of in personnel that's a little bit um, increased. And the reason for that is some of the IRAs, when we pay out IRAs to employees, um, so that money can be paid up until the first quarter of, of the next fiscal year. So some of those payments got processed inside of this fiscal year um, um, for IRAs that are actually uh, due for last year. Any questions on any of these numbers? Uh, I think my last question was impact of, of the change of lease on the actuals. Uh, you mentioned that the, the salary you promoted is a little bit lower. Uh, yeah. Um, is there any hiring costs or anything like that which has an impact? But I assume that there's some hiring costs we budgeted for we had budget for hiring costs every year um and so so there is budget for hiring costs most years we don't use that budget but we'll use we'll use a bunch of it this year um we budget around 1500 dollars for that the amount of the of the salary posted salary is not significantly different than liz's you know it's we're talking about a couple thousand dollars um so so i don't think there's going to be any significant impact either way and um, the, 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 the other thing rate. I would, oh, I'm sorry, what's that for you? No, no, the, the, the gap, obviously, if she's not, if there's no payments for the next, uh, for the last quarter. Yeah, right. That reduces personal cost. Oh, no, not the last quarter, the last two months. Right, that's right. Um, there'll be some payment towards her for her, for her unexpended vacation time, um, just to be aware of that. And then um, just so you know, on a separate issue that I'm going to try to get you, get the board an annual budget as soon as possible um, before, certainly before our November meeting. Um, you know, I'd love to get it done in the next week or two uh, to get it out to you. I'm gonna be going away for the last two weeks of November and uh, we need to set an annual meeting uh, time. And so I don't wanna be caught up uh, by being away. Perfect. Um, I think in terms of financial update, uh, that's also part of it. Elle and I met with the accountants, like we're we're in the loop with regarding, I don't know the form numbers. The, the one form we missed for quite some time, uh, and uh, starting talking about an audit. Uh, I think we're still missing the quote, the final one. Uh, but as the, this office is doing a review, and I assume we have to formally approve this in the board once once we have a quote. Uh, but it seems from the conversation, I got the impression that the best way forward would be that we stay with the those accountants for the review and the audit, which is the biggest thing. Um, and then we're having the conversation with them, what makes sense, how often we do those things and, and so on. That, other than that, El started already answering a lot of questions. Uh, and uh, one of the most likely outcomes is that we have to look more at the finance processes that we implement a little bit more uh, like uh, double signature and stuff like that, that it's, it's more arranged and more official uh, given the, the size of the budget which we have here. Uh, was there anything else out of this conversation which is important for the day? No, I think that covers it. Uh, cool. Well, I'm liking it. I appreciate how nicely this spreadsheet has been put together. I find it very readable. As someone who doesn't know anything about budgets and how they work, <laughs> I appreciate it. It's very nice. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I'm good with it. Uh, if 
there's nothing else on that topic, shall we move to the next one? Sounds good. All right. Um, oh, this is a quick thing I just wanted to throw in here. Um, how do people feel about restarting doing in-person meetings with the board? Uh, I'm in favor. I think it would be good. Uh, if you, nobody actually lives in Northampton, so a lot of people like, uh, I, I didn't know that you live so far away, Alex. Uh, so the question is, what is a feasible frequency? Do we need to make every meeting in person or should we say like once a quarter is a good way of meeting in person? I, 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 like, we, is, it, is it necessary to go full in or is, is a hybrid? Um, well, I mean, it, I would still keep it as um, monthly in person just because I mean, I have to, it's like a 45 minute drive for me. It's not that bad. Uh, and I might be the farthest. So yeah, no, uh, I wouldn't have a problem with that. Uh, if we wanted to do hybrid, I mean, the fact that we'd already probably be having the meetings at NOM, and that is a place where there is the most equipment capability to do a hybrid meeting, we could still consider doing hybrid for people who aren't able to make it in person. Um, and I'm not saying that we should like decide any of this now. I'm just thinking that like, I'm just trying to gauge people's feelings on like moving back to doing in-person meetings. Um, that would make uh melissa's recording job a little more difficult because she'd have to get a physical recorder and record stuff oh, well, uh, that, didn't we say that um it's audio so we yeah can, you can do it with audio only record yep. on our phones mm -hmm. yeah um but uh but yeah just because i don't know i i think it can be more productive um but i mean we've also done really well on zoom so far so it's just something oh, to just, get on people's radars just to clarify, hybrid. I mean, I didn't mean that we do like a. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, I was not referring to hybrid that some people zoom in and some people are, are there oh, physically. Okay. It's just that we do sometimes we do in person and sometimes we do zoom. Uh, okay. If that makes it easy, I don't know. Like I, I, I'm one of the closest people, so I don't. Like yeah. Well yeah. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Melissa. Go it's ahead. funny how. Um, kind of neutral I feel well no I think I going back to in-person sounds good I'm definitely like feel completely fine doing that yeah seeing people again would be good <laughs> um anyway and I mean maybe it is kind of nice I I don't I appreciate Florian's thinking outside the box with maybe doing every other time or something like that, but I don't know. Yeah, anyway, just to, I don't know what I'm voicing. I'm basically saying I can go either way and I kind of think in person might be nice. I, I was there, it was nice to meet everyone for the dinner with Mary Ellis, but like, I, yeah. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. Uh, should we just say we try next time in person or do we want to? Um, I don't know if I want to go that far, but, uh, <laughs> because I want to engage everybody first before I, before I schedule that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we'll keep pro in the next few meetings. I think it'll probably happen. Um, although it's funny that I put this on the, on the schedule and then we find out through Al's director's report that NAM is going to be closed <laughs> next year for a while because of the renovations. So I'm like, oh, well, what a time to get back in person. Um, but, uh. <laughs> We'd still have plenty of meetings before that anyway. Uh, and we can always meet at the high school, which would be fine. Um, but yeah, well, okay. One one idea is um, because in December we'll probably we'll have an annual meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that would be nice to have it in person, and then we could have our board meeting around that and that yeah. kind of kick off our in-person board meetings. That'd be very cool. Is an idea. Yeah. Uh, that's Should just we... a question. Like the annual meeting is separate from a board meeting. Yes. Oh, this is, I saw it. Okay. That makes sense. We, it, we usually do them back to back, um, yeah, okay. or at least we have in the past, but they are technically two separate entities. Um, okay. Well, yeah, just gauge an interest. Uh, that's good for me to know. Um, the next thing is I'm just going to ask Al if he talked to Cynthia yet. 
Um, I, I've sent Cynthia an email to try to figure out a time to meet with her this week. Okay. Yeah. That sounds good. Um, uh, okay. The, um, the strategy workshop. Uh, so I have gotten responses from, uh, uh, several people, most people via doodle for the date of this. And we're looking at uh, very likely uh, the 29th, the last Saturday in October from noon until around five. So, you know, for every time I put the time out there, Florian always laughs. He's always like, no, it's going to go way over that. And I'm like, I don't know, man. <laughs> this is, like, uh, but uh, I see where you're coming from. Anyway, we. Uh, I, I hope we get a dinner afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> And maybe a beer or so. Right. <laughs> well, we'll definitely, we'll probably like order lunch or something because we'll be meeting at noon and we'll, we'll eat, we'll strategize. Uh, but yeah, so I'm coming up with a um, agenda for that. Uh, and again, if anybody has any suggestions for specific agenda items or fun things to do in between the agenda items, uh, do not hesitate to shoot those my way in an email. Uh, but yeah, I'm putting one together. I think it's going to be fun. So lots of, uh, board games and then, uh, board games and bylaws. That's what I'll, <laughs> what I'll dub this, the workshop. Uh, but, uh, I but yeah, just, I just want to let you know that I can come that day, but I'd have to leave at five, which makes me sad because I like the idea of being able to be loose and hang out. But um, anyway, so I just want to let you know that, that I don't, I'm not being antisocial. I just have something like right at 530. So anyway, get, plan accordingly. Yeah. I know you all need well, for beers, but. Is there, uh, where, is the intention to have this at 33 Holly Street? It is, yes. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah. So, okay. That was just a quick update on that. Uh, so uh, wait, wait. Yeah. Well, is that set? It seems like it because that's the okay. the everyone who's responded to the doodle has said the 29th at least so, somewhat works for them, but no one has had a had a preference for any of the other days. So okay, so we're gonna say that's that's real. Yeah, I think we're gonna say it's the 29th. Okay. Good. Do uh, like? Uh, do you want to? Do you have already some agenda you have in mind? Like it. How should we set the target for the uh, for the workshop? It, we don't have a board meeting before that anymore. Uh, no, we don't have another board meeting before that. Uh, if I target, you mean the amount that we're looking to get done? No, no. What, what's the objective? What are we are talking about? Like, what is the idea? Oh, uh, yeah. we're. I mean, our big thing is to solidify the. What is it called? I'm blanking on it. The the board information, that document. Now I don't have it in front of me. The uh, board policies document. Yes. Uh, okay. Because there aren't any there there aren't actually any major parts of the bylaws that I well actually maybe there's like one or two that I want to go over. Those may or may not end up making it to the final agenda. But the the board policies thing is I think my big objective because I feel like our thing is we really want to solidify all of the roles so that going forward we have that groundwork to work with. I think that makes the most sense. But you know you know I'm open to suggestions. Um, yeah, like I, one of the topics which came up is is sustainability of uh, how do we what norm does is amazing and there's so many good things happening how do we move from this to like, uh, like the, there's a lagging in, in, the, in the process is that if anything changes we can maintain this yeah and is that how, like in, in terms of the sustainability uh what are the important things we have to look at um I don't know, is there something in, in, in our, our organizational setup? I don't know. The question is, do we, does it help that we work on the policy document, which I think is an important document, don't get me wrong, but we, I, I think we had a few successful sessions of where we were writing and working on this, and then we're obviously not verify yet, but 
that's something we can push outside of the the, the workshop as well. Uh, when we are together in this form, does it make sense to have like the more strategy view and look at what are the things we need to work on? I don't know. Like I I, I feel that we use the board. The, yeah, it, it, I, I, we will have one workshop a year. How do we make it special enough and use the creative energy of having everyone in the same room and working yeah. out of this? Well, okay, well, let me put it this way in terms of stuff I've been thinking of. Uh, I want to have the board policy document basically finished or mostly finished um, in terms of like getting a finalized thing out of that workshop. But in terms of planning for the future, I did want to try to do like a five-year plan brainstorming type session in terms of like where we're projecting ourselves and things like that. Yeah. So something that's not going to be an official piece of documentation for the organization, but is more of an aspirational brainstorming thing. So so we got a little bit of both going on there. Sorry, I'm so skeptical. Given the conversations Jeremy and I had on <laughs> one paragraph of this document, I think it's very ambitious to have a final document at the end of the session. But That's fair. I get it. I, I, like that, we I, I don't know. That we find a good balance of even if we have a, a, a good structure in the document, and then we work on filling this more out and stuff like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm looking forward to it. Um, I guess my big picture question is, so Alex, your, uh, your planning list? I'm putting together the agenda for it, yes. Cool. Um, okay. And like I said, if anyone has any agenda ideas or things they want to add to it, please let me know. Yeah, if you could share your agenda, like that, the, um, you seem to have a pretty good idea, which is, I which is very great. Uh, I, I don't know. I, uh, it would be nice to just have an idea. Sure. No, um, actually, uh, Melissa, put in the minutes a note for me to send out an email with the agenda once I like get it a little more finalized because I would share it now, but it's like notes and it looks very messy. Um, but I would be happy to, to clean it up a bit and send it out. Um, so I will do that. Um, okay, that's that. Um, preparation for the annual member meeting. Florian, take it away. Uh, th there's not much to it for me. It was just like, uh, this is a biggest thing. I uh, like, was it traditionally in December or is it November? Like, uh, as I recall, uh, it was traditionally December. Yes. December. Okay, then, and the question is, what do we need to do there? Um, is there something like one of the big topics is always uh, member uh, member input and member activity around GNOME? Is, is there any? I don't know. Does it make sense to to try to motivate to make it more interactive with members and try to to create a little bit of momentum in there in in, in the in the annual meeting? How many members are normally coming to this meeting? There it's, I was just about to say, there's a huge range because uh, in the past we've been strategic and put it before or after some kind of event that would draw people. And that's been sort of nice. Like uh, it's been, you know, before a focus locus or before our cool, our awesome like nom party I don't know we had a party because we changed the name we we rebranded re, re um and so I was just gonna bring that up that um but then if we don't have it before an event there's been very few people <laughs> so um I would say I'm not sure if there's something on the horizon um but it is kind of fun, obviously, to have more people rather than less. But then I'm not sure what that event would be. So that's just giving you some context. OK. So what I have from that, it would make sense to plan a party with it, that we have enough interaction and that we bring a message. The question is, uh, I don't know who has organized these parts and do we have the resources for it to do something like that? 
Um, right. We have budget for it inside of the marketing budget. Like we used to hold members nights, for instance. This is something, man, we haven't had a members night. I can't remember the last time this happened, but that was inside of our marketing budget and the annual meeting was often inside of that as well. And that's just money. We used to have gatherings for people, for members to have them come and mingle and 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 chat and get to know each other. And the annual meeting was a version of that. So there's some money if you want to, you know, do something like buy some pizzas or um, some food or drink for people, et cetera. Well, one thought is um, also Focus Locus has kind of gone by the wayside, right? Yeah, it has been. Yeah. We'll have to figure, we're good. Yeah. Um, Cause one thought I, I thought it was really fun having the film sprint. God, I have no concept of time these days, but whenever that the last one was, um, was at the parlor room for the first time in a long time. And that was really a fun vibe. And, um, and I don't know if the parlor room still open and running and a collaboration we could use, but we could potentially do it there and then have some kind of local screening that's not too hard to pull off um and we haven't had one of those in a while so that's just yeah, and, and we still we we still have a good working relationship with them as long as it's not you know we don't usually it just has to be on a particular day of the week you know oh yeah yeah but other than that um, they always say yes to us when they can, or they always have. Yeah. There's also rooms inside of 33 Holly if you wanted to have it in the flex or something like that, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, I, I assumed we would be doing something like getting food at, at the very least, but having another angle to it would be pretty good. Um, some kind of entertainment. Um it would be nice to tie it into an existing event, but it, I don't think there's anything going on in December. Mm -hmm. uh, but we could brainstorm it. I mean, I would not be opposed to doing some kind of screening or uh, maybe talking to Tim about doing some, uh, get, getting some of the people that he works with with stand-up stuff together. That might be fun. I don't know, making it into some kind of, some kind of fun fun. entertainment for the people. That'd be cool. I don't want to take away from any board business inside of the upcoming October 29th date because I know there's ambitions to, to finish this stuff, but is there time inside of that agenda to do a little party planning there? Yeah, sure. I'll throw it in there. I can figure it out. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I feel like this, like the party planning. I, I don't know. I should, we should form a committee. There is nothing strategic long term, so I wouldn't keep putting it in there. To be honest, <laughs> I mean uh, that makes sense. <laughs> that's I, actually I, the board has done that in the past too. They formed committees for that. Yeah. Yeah, like that. That's what I meant with resources. We have big, like money wise, we are covered. There's enough budget in Norm. So if it, a little bit of food is nice, and then it's a question of what's organizational needed to to set this up. Um, it seems like what I hear from Melissa and Alex that it's not that much work in, in this way. To like, and the, the idea with Tim would also be a fun thing. This could be a cool energy. Um, we just have to make it happen. I... Oh, this is kind of silly. Now I'm getting like into this, but you know how um, Al, you um, name a producer of the year and in my memory maybe i'm wrong but we never really see anything from that producer when you name that and it could be i don't know but that's like surprising them anyway it could be kind of fun to like somehow showcase their work it's just a thought but yeah. i don't know yeah. if you want to keep it a surprise then but um, that could be kind of nice. That would be cool. Uh, or so also, know... or the hometown award stuff. We like that mm -hmm. hasn't really. I mean, I haven't seen somewhere where yeah. that's been, you know, screened. And um, so yeah. even just something like, you know, relatively simple, simple in terms of 
you know, curation or whatever, but just, yeah, I would love to see the hometown award stuff. Um, that's a thought. Uh, yeah, that's a great idea. So what, okay. So what I would like to do, uh, as per what Florian was saying, which I think makes a lot of sense. And the more I think about it, the more I'm like, I can't add annual meeting party plan into this workshop if we want to finish in time. Uh, uh, yeah, why don't we have a committee to to put together some uh, ideas for the annual meeting and report back at our next board mem member meeting, which will be still a month before the annual meeting. So we should be able to I think that timeline will basically work. Um, so is anyone interested in being on a committee for that? Okay. How many people do we need? Is it? I think we. I think we only need two, right? Yeah, two is probably fine. Okay. I'll. I'll uh, I can be like a, like a floater, a tagging. No, Jeremy, you have planned a wedding. You know how it's it's done to, <laughs> to plan stuff like that. So. You mean April, uh, April will volunteer for it? <laughs> much. She's the much better planner. <laughs> well. Um, Wait. So is it me and Jeremy? That's what it looks like. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Or you oh, and April. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know. I thought there was three, but yeah, I'm, I'm done. Uh, I'm the same. Like, if you need help, I'm like, let me know. But if you guys want to want to do this, and and if, if there's anything specific you need help on, um, yeah, I would say put together some stuff. You two, um, we can touch base on it during the workshop, but not like you know devote a whole segment to it um, if you'd like. Uh, and then you can report on you, what you've decided during the next board meeting. I feel like that's probably a good way to go. Uh, do we need a vote to form a committee for that? I, I don't think so. I, I don't think we do either, but I was just checking. Everyone's relieved to have us. Do <laughs> yes, <laughs> please. Um, uh, okay, cool. Well, let's see. We had one more agenda item, which yeah, was oh, Mary Alice's thing. Uh, that actually fits right in there. That would also be the nice venue. Uh, when we left the dinner, the topic came up, and I don't know how this miscommunication had, was happening, but I mentioned it like she that she declined the honorary board membership, and she was like, "Oh, did I? <laughs> I would be interested in, in, in the honorary board membership." Uh, so I, I think we should do something, and that would fit actually with the annual member meeting. I would like then we can. If there are some festivities going on, I think that uh, it's an easy part to implement it there and invite her and make make the honorary board membership official for her. And um, like, yeah, but there was a clear message from her. Oh, I didn't know. I think I, I, I yes, like if there's no obligation or anything, it's just a, a thank you. Then uh, she would be very she would be honored by the honorary board membership. So now that you brought it up, I went back to my my texts and she, it's a good clarification. She said, oh, that's very kind to the, she had basically two texts. One was the honorary board member and one was the arch trust board position. So the arch trust board position was, I don't, I don't think I, I have the, okay. um, I don't think I could help. But then she said, oh, that's very kind. Thank you for letting me know on the honorary board position. So that's my bad. I was I was confusing the uh, those two. It was just a fun conversation at the end of the dinner. <laughs> so let's make that happen. I think she would appreciate that. What uh, are next steps for that, Florian, in your mind? Uh, I think the next do we? I so we voted on it. So now she accepted it. So we just have to find the venue, the the, the way of how to present it to her and decide what it means that like do we want to have a plaque somewhere i think that's like and and again what's a what's a good framework and i i really think it fits with the uh preparation of the annual member meeting uh, with the annual member meeting that we honor there in, in front of everyone uh and that that's I, I think that's part of the community circling back anyway so we should we should just make sure that there's a lot of people there <laughs> I think other than that, we already had the dinner. We I mean, she, we had the gift for her and all of those things. I don't think that there's anything necessary. Um, yeah, I think that's great. Put it in annual 
meeting. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So maybe Jeremy and I will also think about that with our party planning. Figure out what the plaque's going to look like, how fancy right. it's going to be. I, I think that like in a formal way, do we want to show this somewhere or the honorary board members of not know? Um, we can also think outside of the box of a plaque, maybe. Yeah, no, totally. I was just joking around with yeah. that. <laughs> 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 uh, but yeah, if you guys come up with anything cool for that, definitely let us know. Um, but yeah, okay. We've, we've got our assignments. We know what's going on. Hope everyone enjoyed the meeting and found it informative. Very good meeting. And basically clocking in an, an hour pretty much so on schedule uh okay can i get a motion to adjourn i motion to adjourn the meeting second all right all those in favor of adjourning the october uh, non-board of directors meeting raise your hand or say aye cool all right meeting is adjourned bye much, everyone take care y'all see you soon have a good night